Oh, hey, look, we got a green leaf. No! Get those nerds! Everybody, you know what this means. It's time for Bid Nerds. Hello, everybody. It's Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on Cars and Bids. Bring a trailer, P-Car Market, Rad for Sale, and whatever other uh, automotive auction sites happen to pop up. My name is uh, Overnight. Yeah, my name is John Polnick. Uh, We are coming to you live from the Las Vegas Strip in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, along with my partner, Michael Deeb, coming to you from San Francisco. How are you this morning, Michael Deeb? What's going on? Buddy. Sup, nerds? Uh, good, JP. It's sunny, oh. and I'm alive. So those two things, uh, I'll take it. That adds up. Uh, you know, yeah. today, speaking of math, um, we are going to. Uh, it's it's third nerd Tuesday. We've just got third nerds <laughs> all week. It's just That's nuts. Right. We're just stacking them, packing them, and racking them. And I am excited about today's uh, guest. Our third nerd is a really swell fellow, really cool Porsche collector. He is the. I, he's the founder, editor in chief, something uh, of Hyper Trash Magazine. If you haven't seen this magazine, it's so awesome. He's going to come on right now. Let's see here if we can get him on. And oh, whoa! Well, so I've got to hit all the buttons correctly. There, there he is. is. What's up, Rise? I'm going to have your lower Reese. third kind of cover here. Reese. Reese. I've been saying Rise Reese. all week. <laughs> yeah, man, Reese, Reese, Reese. Um, it's like Terminator. Okay, there it is. Yeah. Uh, Reese, what is up? Does your does your shirt say? What does your shirt say? Oh, mine says hyper trash. You've got we're, swag. We're we're yeah. just that official. Yeah. You know? Oh, uh, Pinders doesn't have swag. Hyper trash has uh, swag. Yeah, Please tell us that. about hyper trash. What is going on, dude? Well, hyper trash is a magazine we started it about a year ago um, with a good friend of mine, Nathan. He sort of had that vision um, and got a crew of us together. We got some folks down in California, um, some people on the East Coast, Midwest scene. Um, but it started out as being kind of a, a L.A. and Seattle car culture magazine, which which didn't feel like it was going to fit together very well. But <laughs> but it's uh, really blossomed and we're going into our second year. Um, I think people are starting to recognize that we're a magazine that just doesn't care what you think. Nice. We're going to we're going <laughs> to write what we want. We're going to print what we want. Um, we're going to do the things that, that we think make sense. Um, we, we share, we share that sentiment for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Are we, I don't know if we're allowed to cuss on this family show, but <laughs> most of what we do in hyper trash, um, it has a little bit of cussing in it. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Uh, Reese, did you guys start the, the magazine during the pandemic or were the seeds and the wheels sort of already in motion prior to literally one year ago shutdown like what, what, what's that time how did that work out for you guys like like launching something into kind of a dark time yeah so um a little bit of backstory on that is i work in healthcare. um nathan is actually an epidemiologist so when you see those the university of washington says about covid that's nathan hmm. you yeah. know um so it's been a little bit of a trying time for us. I think that we had the the wheels rolling prior to COVID, um, certainly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and our first issue sold out pretty quick. We had to do a few reruns on it. Um, but COVID, I, I think, really gave people time to sit down and read a magazine. And what, when, when did the first one come out? When was it actually officially oh, launched? Gosh. I've got no idea. Was it well, show, show, show us the cover of this one, man. The, uh, that if is you haven't awesome. heard of it, you've probably yeah. seen that photo. That photo became internet. Is it Monaco, famous. Monaco, yeah. that happened, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. And one, and yeah. someone you know, one of someone in your network, uh, one of your contributors, were the was the actual took that picture. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So Nathan uh, goes over to Monaco for the Grand Prix every year, they're a big uh, Formula One family. His son is a uh, successful, I would say, go kart racer. Yeah, um, they're a, they're a, definitely a motorsport family. 
Yeah. Hey, for well, just so in case because we are doing audio versions of this, uh, if you don't know the picture that we're talking about, there's a famous internet picture uh, of a Ferrari F40 just engulfed in flames. It's just on the streets, tragic of Monte and amazing yeah. and gorgeous yeah. at the same time. Um, mm. And it really, it, I, I can't. That is just like the best photo ever. I think I like of any the... car. I love it. What's I that? like the old guy putting out the fire. Let's see if I can <laughs> With get the that. Hose on the, yeah, that's going to help. Yeah. Uh, nice yeah. work, guy in Monaco. Uh, so, yeah, no, congrats on the magazine. Uh, I can't wait to see future episodes. May, or uh, what, what are they called? Not episodes. What's uh, issues? Issues. Issues. Yeah, we've got issues. Right. I got I to gotta get yeah. into the, uh, the so archives of 80s. Our, How, what do we call it? Our magazine? vernacular has issues. That's what's <laughs> yeah. issues. Yeah. So, yeah, we're, we are just launching the first magazine of year two. And I have, frankly, I am, I write for a few different magazines, but I am the most excited about this issue. And I don't even have an article in it. <laughs> wow. Uh, we, awesome. took, we took a couple, uh, a couple sort of staples from older magazines that, yeah. that we liked uh, and smashed it into this, this uh, second year issue mm -hmm. one. And it is just really exciting. Oh, that's cool. How, how often, really often do you guys publish? Are you quarterly? Are you monthly? What's the deal? How, We're quarterly. So there's four that you guys have already in print, and the, the next one's going to the press right now. Yep. So yeah. That's awesome. And then are, can can somebody like log on and still buy issue one, or is issue one even the reprints? Or are they all sold out? Even right now, even the reprints are sold out. It uh, um, We got... Some really amazing press um, from Drive, the Drive. Yep. Nice. Yep. Um, and they said, "Hey, if the the quote is essentially, if if we didn't have to worry about our sponsors and didn't have to worry about getting paid, this is what we would do." Oh wow! Uh, and yeah, I think compliment. that that I think that really resonated with people. Hey, and we can relate to that. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, like I said, we share that sentiment because we don't have any sponsors, uh, but or probably, audience or readers or anything. The, nobody. The uh, only nobody sensory, the only sensory of our language we do is is for patootie sensibilities. John's producer is right at his feet right now, and you know we cover her ears, earmuffs from time to time. But other than that. We, we drop the occasional F and S bomb all the time. So we do try yeah. to avoid that because we are trying to get the algorithm to not hate us. Uh, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> that said, all right, yeah. Reese, I'm excited. Maybe there's a future article about a bunch of nerds. I don't know. Yeah. I yeah. don't know. Who knows? Maybe we know something. Yeah. I don't even know. But, yeah. Um, all right, folks. Well, so uh, we're really uh, we're stoked about this show today. Um, if you've never watched before, what we do is we talk about the most interesting cars of the day and all these auction sites, these automotive enthusiast auction sites. It's not eBay. Right. We're not going out to the boring ones. <laughs> we're going to the ones where there's actually interesting cars. And uh, if you're dorks, if you're nerds like us, we get into it. And not yep. only do we talk about the cars, but we make predictions as to what we think they will hammer for when their auctions end. And so uh, we are a Accountable. We go ahead and we review our auction predictions from the day before. And Michael Deeb, I'm going to have to start calling you Master Deeb because you Oof. have been getting the numbers correct. You yeah. know, you never paid me that kind of uh, respect when I was wiping the floor all over. Um, you know, with with your butt. But now, now I will acquiesce. You have become you have <laughs> apparently learned because you're quite good at this, uh, and I'm not. Oh, and by the way, um, if you think you're going to get financial advice or good advice at all of any kind from this show, keep walking. Find something else on the internet. We don't know <laughs> yeah. what the heck we're talking about. Do not take our advice. We are complete morons as well as nerds. Uh, Reese down there yeah. below as he knows what he's talking about. Take his advice. Don't take mine or Michael Deep's. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. let's JP, go JP, ahead. That's, a pretty, that's a pretty good take because a couple yeah. of these from yesterday, we were we were all really off. Uh, yeah. You know, it's all, you almost forget we had uh, Bradley Branell on here because he didn't win any of the ones from yesterday. Um, I just thought I'd start, I'd lead with that. Cause I oh, told yeah. you he's going to be like, thanks man. How excited I was that we were going up against him <laughs> yesterday. Cause he's, he's not very good at this, which is awesome. <laughs> oh, so we should get oh, on the show all the time. I know he's watching. I love you, Bradley. Okay, here we go. So uh, JP, our star car uh, was the second ever lot to close on Rad for Sale. Yes, we had Bradley on uh, to watch the Honda Del Sol close, but we really dug down and uh, drilled on the uh, 1986 Porsche 944 Turbo. 
Um, this was a really beautiful sort of medium metallic gray car with a full burgundy interior. Um, and in the description, Rad for Sale describes how LBI, the sellers of this car back east uh, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, had basically put this car uh, through the reconditioning for the front line. They had, you know, timing belt, full major <clears> service, <throat> uh, paintless dent repair, and a complete detail. I'm sure they used a cutter on the paint to get it all shiny and glossy, just like a car dealership would do for the front line. Then they took some cool pictures in front of some sort of clamor and put it on red for sale. Now, that to me is probably not the rad for sale formula, uh, but Listen, if you got a, if you've got a good uh, a good dealership that's going to pump cars into your system, I, I absolutely you got to go for it. Uh, so, by all accounts, a really nice car for mileage. JP, if I remember, it was like fifty-seven or fifty-nine thousand miles in this car. Nine forty-fours are moving gently in the right direction, and turbos are, you know, they're not really much more problematic than the normally aspirated ones, uh, if that's fair to say, John. But they definitely have the performance you'd want. So, I said. 25,000 on this car. You took an interesting tack and said, listen, rad for sale, their brand new facility, uh, brand new auction platform, they're the bell of the ball, and they might get this early surge of interest and influence. So you went high at $32,000. And then Bradley himself was kind of cut the difference between us closer to me at 27,000. Um, our car stalled out yesterday on uh, their auction platform. It got up bid up to 15,100, but did not mm. sell at that price. So mm. I won, but that's kind of a default mm. win because the car really didn't make the number that I think everybody thinks the car is worth so it probably uh still available on their auction site i'm sure you could reach out if you wanted to make an offer on this car uh and of course the seller is lbi uh who are back east um that car if it doesn't sell on the auction platform will probably continue to represent it on behalf of either the consigner unless they own it so there you go uh reese have you ever just trashed a 944 turbo are they as fun as everybody says because i am a huge porsche guy and have never owned one but but Bradley has and John has and they swear by it. What's your what's your history with the car? Yeah, so um, I am a huge fan of the transaxle Porsches. Yes. I have probably I don't even know probably seven or eight. Oh maybe. wow! Okay, so you know uh, really well. Ranging from the lowest serial number nine twenty four in the U S. Yep. to a eighty eight SE nine two four. Yeah, I've got a eighty five, eighty six, eighty seven. 944. Wow. We... Um, these are amazing cars. None of those were forced induction. What's a, are you against turbos? What's the matter? You like I, I have a, I have a yeah. 924 turbo. Okay, cool. Oh, that's um, cool. That's a, that's a neat car. Yeah. These uh, 15 is, is I think if you could get it for 20, you'd be doing great. 25 yeah, right. maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, LBI Ad Adolfo and the crew over there are incredible guys. They yeah. search all over the country and bring great examples to market. Yeah, You know, that interior, I'm a, a big interior guy. Yeah. I rarely look at the exterior. I just want to be somewhere driving. And yeah. that looks like a good example. Yep. I, well, I, hey, I agree. Oh, go ahead, JP. Sorry. Well, so the, the, I think the most interesting thing yesterday, I mean, it, here it is. Rad for Sale is new to the game. They're coming out. They want to make a splash. They do have this fantastic car. But it was an interesting move on P-Car Markets. Um, the P car market is another auction site that we talk about uh, regularly. They had the exact same car. I mean, we are talking the same darn car, same yeah. colorway, same color interior, exterior, both of them in, in excellent condition. Um, theirs I think was in Florida. What a horrible right. place to have a, a Porsche. Um, yeah. what a horrible had place a lot, to be. Yeah. And had a bunch more <laughs> miles. Uh, and, uh, that one went for $26,000, right. um, and their auction ended within minutes of this auction. And I yeah. think that, uh, rad for sale, um, they're having a bunch of bugs. Now I don't, you know, the thing is I, I, I want to, we got to preface this because there were a lot of problems. I was watching this particular car as it ended and my interface was hanging up. It was frozen. I yeah. couldn't, we couldn't tell if the auction was ending or not. Um, it was like, okay, can I bid again? Cause it's like, Oh my God, if it's at 15 grand, I'll buy it. Um, and it said it sold at this price for a little bit when we were, re so I don't know. I, I still don't know exactly what happened. Mm. Um, and all that said, you know, I got to imagine there's a lot of bugs when you launch something new like this. 
this. We never, you know, we didn't watch the first day of auctions on BAT. We didn't watch the first day no. of auctions on PCAR Market or Cars and Bids. So did they have these same problems? I don't know if these Absolutely. are normal growing pains Absolutely. or we, if this was, you know. We we had all kinds of problems at Stratus, um, you know, yeah. our first couple of weeks. And, and so, you know, like I'm a specialist and this guy's, uh, you know, H&R and this guy does this and that girl does that. And it, it was just, I mean, we were all in tech for a minute because we were all trying to can't work out these bugs and identify the problems and then get the um, the web engineer online to try and address them because we're doing it again tomorrow. You know, there's no break. It, it's, you know, once you launch, it's like a perpetual watch. It just keeps moving and, and it's hard to keep up with that. Uh, so everything seems to speed up because you're on stage and everybody's watching. I, you know, you got to feel for them. Uh, and I'm sure they'll work it out. It, it, you know, those things will clear up very quickly because, the, you know, you got to make a – you only get so many chances to make a first impression. It's usually yeah. just one. So, Well, and I think yeah. – oh, sorry, go ahead, Reese. No, I, I think that, you know, from what I've seen that they've done a good job bringing – bringing cars on board i'm excited for that reebok 944 me turbo too. cup car me too. that is i mean talk about a piece of history that you can yeah. shred you oh, know yeah totally but all the trick parts out of uh um Vysock went onto that car to make it sort of a road legal cup car uh and and in some in some cases even in the united states you could put that thing on a plate you could, there's a way around it uh and that'd be a um, absolutely amazing car to drive on the street to cars and coffee or to a track day or whatever you want to do with it. What a, I agree with you, Reese. I I'm in love with that car. I it's think really that, cool. I think that that car is somebody's ticket to rent sport. You know, that's how I yeah. look at it. It's got so much history. You can get it out on the track. You can, yeah, take it wherever you want to go. Yeah, listen to that take, hey, JP, let's, for let's, just let's, a second. Let's uh, let's let's stick with the cars from yesterday. We'll get to okay. that other stuff. Uh, let's All get right. through this uh, this recap of yesterday, and then we'll circle back uh, to Rad Very for good. Sale. All right. All right, JP. Then we left Rad for Sale. We jumped up to P Car Market, and we looked at 2009 Porsche 911 Turbo Cab with a main transmission, 79,000 miles. Like this car, I think JP. Uh, it was one of the last years of the 997.1 turbo cab uh the manual certainly makes the makes the car here and i said eighty eight thousand. you went higher at ninety nine thousand. uh and uh bradley also came in above me but well below you at ninety thousand. this car sold for seventy six thousand dollars so it did have a late <laughs> flurry but it did not come up to the numbers that we were uh, talking about for that car uh what do you think reese you like those you know, I'm uh, not a 997.1 fan. Uh, I'm mostly air-cooled air cars. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but I'll tell you, we've got a, a Cabriolet G Series 911, yeah. and driving a, any 911 with a top down is a special thing. Oh, uh, now I see why you got him. All right, JP, this guy's another Reese Cabriolet. Not a Cabrio phobe. Not a yeah, Cabrio phobe. Cabrio apologist. Okay. JP, let's jump over to cars and bids. We looked at a 2014 Falcon F7, number three of seven made from 2014, which is 3,300 miles. This car was designed and constructed in Detroit, Michigan, uh, and sold new for $250,000, employing the services of a, uh, I can't remember now, like a seven liter uh, normally aspirated Corvette drivetrain with 600 horsepower and 500 pound foot of torque. Uh, beautiful body. Not a fan of like maybe the wheels and some of the finishing details with like a two tone interior. Uh, metallic paint, I don't think looks so good on a car that basically looks like a Le Mans race car with no wing and headlights. Uh, I had <laughs> never heard of the Falcon F7 prior to this car appearing on Doug DeMiro's uh, auction platform. So, congratulations for getting, you know, the Obscure Car of the Week award. Uh, what a neat vehicle. Reese, have you ever Falcon F7 prior to being on this show? I am not. Are we I'm, your I'm, first? I'm Googling it over here. Yeah, you know? <laughs> really cool. Uh, neat car. We certainly liked it. And by all accounts, I imagine it's amazing to drive. Uh, JP, I said 125000 And again, you went over at 127. Uh, and then uh, Bradley came in underneath at 95000 uh, We did pretty good. This car was in the $90,000 range when we looked at it. It sold for 100 or no. It was bid to $122,000 and failed to sell at that number. So there you go. With the, Man, the bid I can't goes believe on on the that guy F7. let $122,000 get away. 
yeah. he is going to have to want to own this car for the rest of his life. There's no way anyone's bringing more money than that. What do you think of that? Well, the, the, you know, I think that some of these are like cars that that people get for the love of it. They see some vision in it, and it's hard for them to to walk away from that, even if the money is right. You know, that yeah. sounds fair for that car, all things told. Right. So the question begs then, does he, the only place to go where somebody else might have heard of it is bring a trailer. If he mm-hmm. ran it now in March on Cars and Bids and it appears and bring a trailer, say, in June, is that car already burned from the fail to, to fail to sell on Cars and Bids? Or will bring a trailer just give it a fair, a fair chance because it's such a rare car? I, no, I, I think, think it's burned. Yeah, I think so, too. I, yeah, I, I, think, I don't uh, think it's burned. I, I don't think it's burning, guys, I, uh, yeah. because it's like, look, nobody looks at cars and bids. Cars and bids probably gets <laughs> a tenth of the traffic that BAT does. I mean, it's just yeah. that simple. I like cars and bids. I like their philosophy. I like the, the site in general. But, I mean, this is the kind of car that people on BAT were like, oh, my God, one of these is for sale. We haven't seen one of these for sale ever. It's like, well, yeah, it was just yeah. on the other page right over there, and nobody looked. Uh, if it were the other way around, yes. If it didn't sell on BAT, it's burned for good uh, for everywhere. But coming from I, cars and bids, I, don't know. I actually I, I I kind of agree with you, JP. I actually think somebody will have seen it and comment on it if that listing were to mm-hmm. go live on BAT. But I also think that if BAT's reach is as big as we know it to be, they also might find the buyer for it at one hundred and sixty thousand or one hundred seventy thousand yeah. or whatever the consigner is looking for. That guy might if if that guy exists, he'll be in that room. You know, he'll see it. <laughs> but anyway, all right. Hold on, yeah. Reese. I just got to say that no one has ever looked cooler on our show. Oh. He's got like this kind of like uh, floating head. It's a floating head. On. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's uh, you're very it's, ominous down there. It's why you're, it's why good looking guys wear black <laughs> turtlenecks because they just present their face in a dark room. Yeah. My uh, my the hospital system I or the healthcare system I work for just made me the face of medicine for them. Mm. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> just for it. my area yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm seeing it yeah yeah regionally he's a really big deal <laughs> <laughs> he's a local treasure he's a local yeah, treasure. Absolute local treasure absolutely. Oh, all right, JP, all right. we did eventually make it over to bring a trailer because i found what i thought was the coolest car of of the year a 1973 volkswagen bus camper with a Porsche 2.2 flat six with twin carburetors and a four-speed manual, Fuchs wheels, and a great-sounding exhaust. Uh, JP, I was in love with this thing, and no surprise, you and Bradley both joined me. Uh, that would have been a menage a quat or whatever you call that. Um, that car was awesome. Uh, that would have been the weirdest road trip ever if we decided to bring it down from Canada because I think this car was offered in Vancouver or someplace north of the border. Um, but really nice condition. We all lamented that the fact that it was in Canada was going to hold it back despite the ease of importation for a 25 year or older car uh and certainly if california is the market for this thing it'd be even easier because it's smog exempt uh so this would just be a cakewalk across the border but still nobody's feeling that right now uh i thought this car might bring twenty nine thousand dollars uh because it was already done and then you said no way deep this car is not going to go anywhere i'm going to go nineteen thousand. Uh, and Bradley followed me on the north end, and he said 25. JP, you were all over this thing. This thing called this car sold for fourteen thousand seven hundred fifty dollars, which is to suggest I am not sure it got maybe one or two more bids from where we looked at it when we reviewed it with like a couple hours or so. Uh, but that was your lone win of the day. And then we I thought that nine nine seven was a bargain. That's insane. It sold for fourteen grand. Even if you got to eat up a couple two three thousand dollars and getting across the border, that's still a screaming deal. Just have the engine. Jeez. Yeah. Which Even, which engine is it? Did you uh, two point two nine eleven yeah. engine? Yeah. yeah. Probably nineteen seventy or seventy one. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But switch to carburetors. It had twin forty uh, three Weber. carburetors or whatever yeah. those things are. Yeah. Have, I have a question. Have either of you guys ever driven a Volkswagen van with a 911 engine? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. It is, it is a so awesome. harrowing experience. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a, <laughs> yeah. I have a friend with a, a turbocharged engine in one. And oh, boy, you are wrestling that thing down the road. <laughs> you know, I it is. It. And you're sitting it. so far out over the front that it just it's scary. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. scary. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. That's that's what we're looking for. Uh, and then last car, another Volkswagen JP, the '93 Volkswagen Corrado SLC. Uh, I knew I was in trouble on this car. 
um, when I did a high bid uh, and you guys were coming in, you reminded me that that uh, 16 valve one didn't fare very well uh, that we saw that had been imported from Japan. So uh, JP, you kind of led the way by saying 13,000 that the, you didn't think this car had a chance. Uh, it was at like 10 grand when we were looking at it. Um, and then Bradley said 15. I changed my bid from 22 down to 17. So I did kind of cheat. The car sold for $16,750. Technically, I got the win, but I was just trying to cover my bet and not look so stupid uh, because we didn't think it was going to go anywhere. But when you look back on this, that other car, the 16 valve with 30,000 miles only brought like 14,000 bucks, JP. This car brought nearly 17 and had 103,000 miles on it. Um, it this just doesn't make sense. There's a weird Volkswagen community that watches on bring a trailer because the Volkswagen results JP seem to boggle the mind. It doesn't make sense that this car brought more money than the one that in your and I opinion uh, was the true unicorn that has appeared since we've started doing the show. Uh, what the heck is going on with Volkswagen community on bring a trailer? Quick comment on that. Reese, go ahead. You know, I, I don't know anything about the <laughs> He's Volkswagen like, I don't know community. anything about Volkswagen. Oh, yeah. uh, we, we've said it before about things like Volkswagens. And uh, so it's like modern um, modern enthusiast cars on cars and bids fail over and over and over again. Audis, Volkswagen, GTIs, that kind of stuff. Stuff that's like 13, 14, you know, late model stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Because the people that can afford that car can't afford to buy it cash. They have to buy it with a, with a loan. So it's yeah. really hard to to uh, you know take advantage of a of a deal on an auction site when you don't have the money lined up. Um, I think most people that are into Volkswagens, most of the people that were nostalgically into these cars back in the day, have already moved on to other things. You know, we right. get, we started out on on these water boxer, uh, these water pumper Volkswagens, and then moved to BMWs, and then eventually got to Porsches, or maybe skipped mm -hmm. BMWs altogether. And so, even though we may be nostalgic for something like a Corrado, I certainly am because they certainly were a, a big car in my life uh, when they were new. Um, I don't really want one uh, because for. 20 grand, I could get another 944 or 919 or 996 or about 20 million other cars uh, on the list. Um, that 16 valve one I would have bought, uh, and I've said it over and over again. I right. missed it because I was on a dang Zoom call because um, I think that was a crazy bargain. And I think that car will definitely come up because, you know, that was yeah. Radwood. These VR6, these early, you know, the Mark III Volkswagens are pieces of junk too when it comes down to it. They just, they fail miserably on all kinds of levels. So great car when it works, but that's a rare thing. Um, so yeah, I, I just don't see us, I don't see them taking off. I mean, maybe yeah. if we found a super, super clean Scirocco, we have not seen one yet. We've talked about three or four different 16 valve Scirocco's, uh, but yeah. we have never seen a truly clean one. That we may are. change yeah. the, that and may change I the may world. try to bid on one of those, yeah. which would be great. But yeah, Reese, right. what JP alludes to is that uh, the kid that wants this car, uh, you know, didn't clean his room and do his homework and mommy won't come sign. So it's, right. uh, it, it, it's, it, they're having these cars are falling, you know, in between two genre, you know, like demographics and they're failing to find uh, buyers I, and I, an audience. Yeah. So. I agree with that. Yeah. 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 There were a few of them that floated around my high school. Uh, uh -huh. good, <laughs> good, good cars, but yeah, probably the owners have, in fact, the, the kid that's an owner, he's, that had one in high school, he just messaged me. He's looking for a 997 Turbo. So yeah. he's the guy that did a little better, maybe, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, he could have gotten a steal on that red one. Holy <laughs> cow. I still can't believe that red 997. Uh, I think that was correct. I think that was miles. a, a miles, fair yeah. number. Yeah. You know, yeah, in, I, in the Porsche Porsche world, miles don't scare me. I don't think you got to be be that concerned about miles. Talking about 944s, right. I have one with 200,000. Yeah. I've got a... 1980 SC that has 250,000 miles. You know? Speak in JP's language. Yeah, yeah. man. I, you I gotta drive I'm them. not scared of miles personally, but they cert it certainly affects the value. Uh, and as, I mean, the thing is about the 997 turbo convertible with a stick, that is actually a car that I have been looking for for about a year I've been look if there's any there's like two or three cars that I've been looking at hardcore because everybody knows I own a, a mark I have a 997.2 cab that is just a it's just a regular Carrera and it's a manual when I was searching for it what I was searching for was one of those because at the time about a year ago they <laughs> were about that price uh, they were like in the 60s you know and somewhere in the last six months they have just shot up and I haven't seen everything a else. turbo six uh, a turbo six speed convert 
convertible 997. I haven't seen one for less than 75,000 at any miles um, in the last year. So this one, that price did surprise me. I think the red thing hurt it more than anything. Um, really? But, uh, uh, well, in a, in that and the in that and the miles. I mean, it's just at, at some point the people that are spending more than 50 or 60 grand start to get needy, you know, get nitpicky about the miles. I think the you know, I'm going to take a little bit of an opposing stance here. In that car, I would rather have uh, automatic. You know, mm-hmm. I think of the turbos as kind of, for me, a, like kind of a GT car. You know, that's yeah. a car that, that's a car that, I think we get in and 18 hours later, we're in Vegas, you know, Seattle to Vegas. <laughs> yeah. You have a good trip, come yep. down, have coffee with, you know, have coffee come down with to cars you guys. And cafe and, and then yeah, cruise back yeah, up. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and, and I don't want to grow an anchor box. Um, you know, an Elko, Nevada, you know. Uh, Elko is such a nice place. The problem with the 997, uh, you know, Mark 1s, they're all Tiptronics. They're not PDKs. If it was a PDK, I could say, right. yeah. But that Tiptronic is such a piece of junk. Um, and the 997 <laughs> is set up more like a GT rather than a GT3. Uh, but it yeah. just... You know, I mean, when you want it to do what you want it to do, the the Tiptronic just is so slow. Annoying. It's just too it's, slow. It is really it's slow. Like not acceptable. J- yeah. Reese, JP will save you a spot right in front, but if you show up with a with a with a Tiptronic, he will <laughs> kick you to the. He'll kick you across the street with the imports, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Get out of here with that thing. Oh my god. You and your uh, torque converter. Uh, all right, let's get to... Uh, so there it is, guys. That was yesterday's cars. We haven't even gotten to today's cars. What are we here for? Oh if God. you just came in, if you saw the thumbnail and were clickbaited into going, oh, I wanted to see a video about an M6 BMW, and these yep. yahoos are talking about Tiptronics and Porsches, what a bunch of jerks. Well, too bad, <laughs> right? We're nerds. This is bid nerds. We nerd out yeah. on the most interesting cars of the day on Cars and Bids and Bring a Trailer. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe, the like button, the notification thing share this video share our other videos go watch a bunch of them i don't know take a road trip to vegas like reese just said and just just drive down here and listen to bid nerds you can you 17 hours of bid nerds from from seattle to to vegas you'll be up to speed (laughs) on all the prices on all the most uh awesome sites uh let's get to the cars today jp if anybody listened to 17 hours of bid nerds they'd never travel to las vegas again (laughs) Uh, dude i think i think that is the answer to getting people back to vegas i mean come on we gotta bring the tourists back and they're all coming oh, here because Lord. of the nerds. They're like, yeah. I saw these dorks. They, they, they're they on the strip. They said they're right on the strip. Where are they? Oh, my goodness. You see it all the time. Yep. All right, JP. Our star car is on Bring a Trailer. It is a 1988 BMW M6. Uh, I I don't know if I've ever said this to you, but I lusted after this car uh, in high school. I thought this was the coolest machine uh, that I couldn't buy. Uh, our car is offered out of Ogden, Utah, in cinnabar red paint with just under a hundred thousand miles on the odometer the 3.5 liter and i'm going to say this correctly let's see the s38 b35 inline six one of the wow. earliest itinerations available legally in the united states in other words this car <laughs> was still an m motor but it had to pass smog was good for just 256 horsepower but a surprising 243 pound foot of torque from a normally aspirated inline six and by all accounts, these cars felt more powerful than they actually were. If you were driving one, it probably felt like a, a lightweight, rev-happy V8. And yet it was this stout inline six. Uh, and these cars were just fantastic driver's cars. Um, gray market cars have been being brought in all the time. And finally, BMW North America said, let's get this car on the road. Uh, it followed the uh, M5, which did really, really well. They were only offered in a few colorways. Um, but it just the lines of the six were so pretty. I always thought the, uh, um, you know, the uh, CSIs, the uh, 2800 CSIs and the 3.0 CSIs and CSs were really gorgeous cars. And that took this into a modern edge with like, you know, little uh, trunk lid spoiler and a front air dam. JP, if you get to the steering wheel, stop on that photo for just a second. I just want to point something out. There are a couple of modifications to our car. By all accounts, it looks like our car does have 100,000 miles on it. There's just sort of normal wear and tear. This was not a show queen by any stretch of the match. Right there. Stop for there for a second. Um, 
But in addition to the aftermarket wheels and some aftermarket Bilstein shocks on the rear, there is this inexplicable like Grand Auto steering wheel cover <laughs> on the uh, outer leather. Can you see that, JP, in the photo? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's really bad. Um, so The O'Reilly's uh, steering wheel cover there? Yeah, yeah. The paint looks to be in pretty decent shape by my eye. You can tell me better because I know you've got it up on the big screen in your, uh, in your office. Um, I would change the wheels back. I'd go back to the stock wheels, which I think are included in the sale. Uh, I love the Bilstein suspension. Um, I hope that that steering wheel is good underneath there because I'd want to go back to the stock wheel. Uh, but this car probably needs a little bit of love. They've been jumping up in value. Again, Enthusiast Auto, uh, whatchamacallit, in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, Eric Keller has been selling M cars for the last decade uh, and really setting the bar high. And M6s have been on the climb. So this car was at just $18,000 last night. JP, it's up to $25,000 on 32 bids out of Ogden, Utah. So despite the mods and the miles, this car looks like it's going to have a little tiny flurry here at the end on VAT, which is not uncommon. Uh, 18200 on thirty on 27 bids last night. So it got like five or six bids overnight and it's jumped like seven thousand dollars reese what do you think you love these uh these old analog bmw m cars before forced induction and active suspension and water misting the turbos and all this other crap they've invented to make the cars cool this is cool what do you say i agree i think this is a cool car i think this is another car that you that you buy to to drive on a long trip and you you have that in your mind and that's what you do with it you know i love the color i actually really like the wheels those are my yeah. favorite BMW seats, you know. Right. I, like I said, I, yeah, I'm an interior guy. I want to I want to be mm. sitting there and driving, so having those seats is really really important to me. Do you remember when these cars were new? I know I'm sure you're a lot younger than I am, but like the, that dash is slightly canted towards the driver, which is really cool. You kind of created this sort of cockpit design and it just made the, the the interior and the aerogonomics were so driver focused. JP, you had mentioned that I think on the 300Z, uh, how they had Nissan had done something similar, maybe a year or two later, but but even more so. And then the Toyota Supra that came out was really overly done, where the passenger almost looked like they were in a sidecar. Uh, do you see how that dash is just slightly canted towards the driver? I just thought that stuff was really cool. In period, John, have you driven one of these? Yeah, these things are so fantastic. I'm slightly concerned about the lack of any clear pictures of the dashboard as well. Um, you know, because as, I'm with you, Risa, interiors are a big deal because that's what you're seeing. You're not seeing the car when you're driving around. You're looking at that space around you. And I don't know about you, but uh, Deeb and I cannot we just can't abide by cracks on the dash. It is yeah. such a deal killer. And this one clearly has a dash pad on it. Uh, right. You know, and I'm just scared that they're covering something up. Maybe it's mentioned in the ad that the dashboard is fine. Uh, there's, I'm just I'm going. I think it yeah. says, it says the car's out of California, uh -huh. uh, which doesn't, doesn't do us any good for that. That yeah. dash I'd say, yeah. I but mean, that's I'd, just... I, oh, go ahead. I'd rather, I'd rather a crack dash have mm -hmm. a, that, that carpet on the dash so with you there. myself yeah 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 we i mean between that and the steering wheel cover we're we're left to sit here going all right are we is that what What's is going, going on? on why are we covering that up i don't have a like uh you know if like i have an old targa 911 that the dashboard's all cracked up and i got one of those plastic dash things that just pops on it's not one of these carpet ones it actually looks like a dash it looks proper yeah. um and it looks really good uh so okay i'll deal with that but one of these carpet toupee things those are just awful uh, they look way <laughs> worse than a than a than a crack dash it's like what are you dash coming over it, it's a oh, dash JP, comb over right great. there That's uh awesome. you know it, it's just not okay. I mean, just show us what we're dealing with. We're buying a car on the internet. We want, we, it makes me think, okay, if you're covering that up, what else are you covering up? Uh, right. so I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about that. Uh, I so gotta, we'll I gotta say, I think that this is probably an honest car. You know, this, the owner before this gentleman is also in the comments. Um, I think okay. it's just, you know, it, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a cool car for a while and, and now it is, and now it's for sale, and I think it's fairly represented. Yeah, yeah, I like. Uh, it is kind of honest. Um, he does mention that there's some slight corrosion underneath the car, uh, and so you just gotta you gotta look at it as you know eyes wide open and and kind of know what you're getting into. Uh, two hours to go, JP, out of Ogden, Utah. Um, 
early M6s are on the rise. I, I, I'm not saying this is an investment grade, but it's probably a pretty safe place to put your money and certainly would be a fun hobby car. Uh, you know, like Reese loves the wheels. I, I would want to go back to a, a like a mesh wheel, like a BBS wheel, but I'd go up from the 16 inch that it came on mm. because these 17 inches look really good on the car. I try to find a 17 inch wheel to complement the thing and then, you know, modify the exhaust, maybe get that suspension dialed in even further. Just instead of shocks, I do springs and shocks and have some fun with it because uh, I'd love to drive this thing. They just rev and rev and rev. It'd be fun. Well, these and these came with a different rear suspension, I think, that's been uh -huh. converted over to the build steam. Right, is did my understanding. Like, did they have like a self level? Yeah, that was popular back then. I have a uh, an A6 190E 16 valve, the Mercedes, and it's got self leveling rear suspension, which is still working on my car. <laughs> but I intend to I intend to put those in a box on the shelf and talk about them. But I'd rather drive it with the uh, you know coilovers or something. I got to drive one of these on the Targa Baja down in Mexico. Um, when Rami's car blew up, when our 930 Turbo <laughs> blew up on the, uh, the La Ruma Rosa Pass, uh, then yeah. um, Derek Tanisalichai, uh, rest in peace, yeah. uh, his dad was driving one of these. And I'm yeah. now that we're looking at this car, I need to reach out to him and find out. I know that that car, they something happened they had to have it, the head rebuilt and i know it's it was languishing in a shop somewhere for quite a while like a couple of years so i need to reach out to him and find out whatever happened to this car because yeah. it was so much fun i was shocked how good because i had dri it, it was uh it was the kind of the one of the the tan the gold tan it wasn't a striking okay. color like this um but it was just i have driven a ton of six series cars uh, of this era and they're fun to drive but there's definitely you know touring cars they're oh, squishy yeah, yeah. and big and heavy and you can feel every pound but that m6 man uh with the manual really uh is Oof. a different car and so much fun i'm i'm with uh team reese here i like the wheels i think they're period correct and they look i knew you guys would on team car. up on me all team right funny. all right so where's it gonna land where's it gonna uh, what's uh what's jp what's... last night i said twenty eight thousand dollars. it's up to 25 already mm. um I, i'm just, just gonna throw one more grand on my bid and say 29 but i just i'm not sure if i believe in this hundred thousand mile car that's that's like there's questions on the corrosion there's questions on the cosmetics of the dash i i don't feel confident breaking the thirty thousand dollar plane so reese twenty nine thousand dollars to you where do you think this one's gonna hit you know i uh I'm going higher than you. I'm thinking yeah. 30, 32. Yep. I think that's going to be a fair number. I think it is going to break the 30,000 mark. All right. um, I think that people see this as a, as a car that's going to get them places and going to let them look cool doing it. Right. And they're definitely moving in the right direction. So I think that's a really good bid. Let's see what JP says, because now I'm totally in his head. He's so confused. We have a three third nerd on here and he doesn't it know messes which way me up. up. It Absolutely. messes me up when we have yeah. a third nerd. Uh, this is an M, man. I mean, if it were just a six fill in the blank, it'd be yeah. a different story. But this is an M car and we've seen E30 M3s just it just stratospheric prices yeah. that just don't make any sense on any kind of planet. Uh, I think all M's are going to are going that direction not as far as the e30 the are, early ones too yeah yeah i mean come on yeah. this has to be thirty thousand dollars i have never i mean this car is just uh, for 30 grand i don't know if you can get a cooler car are there better cars oh, that you can get wow. for 30 grand for yeah, sure yeah, yeah. but cooler i don't think so this is yeah. i think and and it could have sky uh this could go up it could sky. yeah it could where are you so at, i'm JP? just betting uh thirty thousand i'm gonna say right at that i'm gonna sit oh. on that mark just, right he's just see see this he doesn't even play you he's just trying to beat me damn I get straight because those, those are the only numbers that matter <laughs> well, those are the ones that we keep track of the the All third right. nerds just to get the cruise right on in here and they don't they're they don't have to be accountable <laughs> they don't have to be here tomorrow and hear you gloat uh yep. they just like whatever it's the i want to be a third nerd reese you want to <laughs> take my spot I'll, i will Let's do it in. Yeah. all right you will yep. switch all right you start taking i love how place. he offers you the controls he would never let me host the show that's for sure <laughs> rating our yeah, ratings of no. six people would plummet down to like two yeah, yeah. My, and it would go up to at least 14 if we had reese as the host instead of me so uh, that which would be doubling our audience all right all medical people that's for sure yeah uh, <laughs> all right all right uh, reese reese really funny last night so i did all my homework for the for the show to get all my things ready and and four of our cars were in the twenty five thousand dollar range uh, so for similar money, and I'll keep saying that today just because of how these cars are stacked up on Bring a Trailer, for similar money, you could also look at this 2009 Porsche Cayenne GTS with a manual transmission, 
offered out of Atlanta, Georgia, also bright red. Uh, and the big thing here, of course, is the six speed manual. Uh, anyways, um, the car has 123,000 miles on it and by all accounts is basically all stock uh, with no no issues, no modifications. Uh, and last night was sitting at $25,000 on 10 bids. This car is actually on cars and bids, again, out of Atlanta, Georgia, 123,000 miles. An E1 platform Cayenne with normally aspirated 400 horsepower V8 and a six-speed manual. Uh, JP owned one, Reese, and it was black, which is his favorite color on a vehicle. And he sold it, and he made a a decent dollar on the transaction. But I was <clears> stunned that he let it go because he loves his Cayennes. He loves his manual Cayennes, and he's had three of them now, but this was the only GTS. He sold it, and he did well on it. Have you driven one of these things? Because I have. They are absolutely amazing, and they're really cool. Like, if you had to have an SUV, a six-speed manual 400-hour V, I mean, is a recipe for smiles. What do you say? If you have uh, the pleasure, I, I own a 2009 uh, GTS with the automatic. I have driven a six speed GTS, and it is one of those memorable driving experiences. I remember I drove it in downtown Seattle, where yes. it was wow. way too big for the streets. Yep. I was, uh, it was a customer car at a shop that I was hanging out at, and yeah. he, he asked if I would drive to work. Instead of him having to take a, a Uber, or back right. then it would have been a cab, uh, and <laughs> and he said, "Let's see what it's hot." And I just remember just chugging through that gearbox. They are yeah. so much fun. Yeah. Uh, this one looks like it's in very very nice shape, and they sound so good. Yeah, the sport exhaust is pretty cool on these things, um, and I'm a huge fan of that front grille opening, like all the little appendages and wings and rockers and stuff. Uh, I think they make the car. Uh, red wouldn't be my first choice, and JP and I have a huge aversion to off-colored dashboards. I, I'll take the tan seats, but give me a black steering wheel and a black dash cap, uh, and then I can throw black carpet like floor mats in there and, and live with it. Uh, but this one being all beige, it feels like you're in the belly of a whale, uh, so I'm not a huge fan of this. Uh, but JP, what do you think, man? Do you miss yours when you see something like this or what? Every time I see one, I'm like, oh, man. They, they, they are one of the most fun, fun Porsches on the planet just because uh, you're just marveling at what the heck is going on around you when you're going through the gears. You just can't believe that this 5,000 plus pound thing <laughs> is yeah. mashing it through a corner. And you're like giggling when you're keeping up with the GT3 RS. Uh, the, yeah. the single greatest thing about these cars is how thick the steering wheel is. It's got this big, thick, round steering the wheel sports steering wheel yeah, yeah the sports steering wheel this is the only one that it comes on and it just Standard. you know yeah. yeah and i have put that steering wheel on the other two manual cayennes that i had that were bases and they really it's just one of those things it's you know it's that touch point that really makes a difference on how an overall uh, how overall a car feels it's kind of like when you put a prototypo in an old 911 it just transforms it um these are just magnificent vehicles they can be a little bit of a maintenance hog though so no you know Ooh. you got to know that going into one of these uh fuel pumps and you know drive shafts and liquid tires cool. and brakes yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just yeah. like you yeah, better you, have a bank account to go with it uh <laughs> these are yeah. not cheap to yeah. run um Be but befriend, yeah befriend your independent repair mechanic in absolutely. your area because you're going to yeah. be seeing him regularly yeah yeah, yeah. where's it going to land deep all right, so JP, our car has not gotten a lot of love overnight. Mm -hmm. So it was at 25000 on 10 bids last night. It's sitting with two hours to go out of Atlanta, Georgia on 25250 on 11 bids. So uh, you and I are very suspect about the late potential flurry on cars and bids. They don't really seem to happen. Yeah. Uh, but I still think these cars are strong in the secondary market. Um, and despite the lack of action, I put a little bit higher bid on this one. So I am going over 30. I'm going to say $32,000. Um, and if nothing else, John P., pandering to my co-host, you have helped set the bar high for manual Cayennes, and this one's got a V8. Why wouldn't it go to 32? So I'm I'm confident my bid, despite the lack of attention that it's getting on cars and bids. Reese, $32,000 to you. Where are you at? I don't, you know, I, I honestly don't see 32. Um, uh, see. I know it's it's great car and all that stuff, but but I don't know if the market's out there. I don't know if the market's on, at cars and bids. Uh, yep. just platform yet. handicap. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so I talks about it. I'm thinking 29.9. I just don't think it's going to hit that that 30. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
That's awesome. Good take. Yeah, you know, look, if my manual base Cayenne that I sold on Cars and Bids went for seventeen grand, um, the I had another manual base that had about twenty thousand more miles, and we sold that one on BAT for twenty thousand dollars. So a good, significant increase in price uh, in what one platform over the other would bring. And I don't Absolutely. think this one's going to be any different. Cars and bids is not the place for this car. If this car were on BAT, uh, Deeb, your number would be spot on because it does have some higher miles. One hundred twenty-nine thousand miles is is means that it would just barely break thirty. Uh, we're seeing some. <laughs> or, they yeah. they peaked and then now they've kind of dropped a little bit. Um, yeah. So I, okay. I agree with you. 123,000 miles needs means it needs a lot of attention. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it's going to get two more bids at about a thousand dollars a pop. So I think it's, what was your number uh, deep? I went 32 and Reese went 29, nine. It's yeah, at 25. I'm, I'm going 27. Um, wow. Really but I think, conservative. Here, yeah. Here's, here's my question, JP. Do you think, you know, thinking about that, is this worth, twice as much as your base you know if you sold it for 17 if this guy goes in the low 30s or wherever it ends up do you think it's twice as much car that would be my question it is it really is yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about it and as much as i am a you know i i will wave the flag of the base cayenne because it is so fantastic but and and to that i mean that's an inch it's a good question it's an interesting question because i have often said that a manual cayenne in whatever configuration it is whether it's a base or GTS, a manual Cayenne is worth twice as much as a uh, as its Tiptronic counterpart. So you know, because the two Cayennes that I sold, uh, the the two base Cayennes that I sold, uh, were definitely twice as much as they would have been had they had a Tiptronic, and it's more than twice the car. They are, just, I mean, a Tiptronic Cayenne is like give me ugh, snore, right? But yeah. uh, you know, in the yeah. in the GTS, it's just a magical vehicle. If you can yeah. afford to, uh, the uptake, it mm -hmm. is the greatest SUV of all time. Reese is a great question because you're talking cosmetics yeah. with the body kit. Uh, yeah. Most of them come with bigger wheels, definitely bigger brakes. You got way mm -hmm. better suspension. You got sport exhaust, and then oh, by the way, there's a whole other hundred horsepower under the under the motor. Yeah. Um, so it is. And then JP says even the little details like the steering wheel uh, add up to a, a you know something that's greater than some of their parts. So that's a great question, uh, and the answer is probably yes. It, it's I think. The one. Yeah, I like to think. You know, I have in my mind. I have these. I call them throwaway cars. So like, I would see a base uh, Cayenne six speed. You know, it's gonna. It's much less expensive, but you could completely take it off roading and thrash yeah. it, and kind of do yeah. this. Uh, totally. Is it is it a Rami esque? Is that yeah, a, exactly? A, a yeah, thing yet? excellent. You know, excellent. You oh. could kind of get your shred on with that, and and not have to worry too too much about it being too precious. Isn't it funny, JP? How, uh, how Reese doesn't know who we are, but but Rami is hyper trash recognized like that's oh hyper trash he, is, he is hyper trash material <laughs> oh yes. my god yeah we've been telling him that for years trash. i mean hyper trash. i am waiting for his 9 30 to burn down like that f uh you know oh my god. Uh, yeah he's already there, got into a g square yeah. yeah. It, 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 we'll we'll have a cover for him when that happens. Send All a right. picture of Rami's G squared to Hyper Trash. Please make oh, it back yeah. page. Yeah, I, it's yeah. a digital video, yeah. so I'd it'd be a, but that would be a good cover. G uh, a yeah. G squared yeah. burning to the ground too. Not as good a photo yeah. as Out that in the one. Desert. Yeah. Yeah. Whew, we've got video though. Uh, yeah. All okay. Right. Well, this is a great car. I, yeah. Last thing to say: uh, the exterior color is amazing. Interior color horrible. And if it were black, yep. it would definitely bring more money in inside. For sure. Absolutely. Right. And that might that might be what keeps me from my bid. JP, a really cool car coming up here on Bring a Trailer is a 1973 BMW hmm. 2000 TII Touring. Now, notice I did not say 2002. This is a 2000 TII Touring. These cars were only available in Europe. This was not an original uh, U.S. car. Offered out of Asheville, North Carolina. Um, it's showing 63,000 kilometers and true mileage unknown from the 2-liter M10 inline 4 with a 4-speed manual. Uh, Reese, take it away. I'm going to go walk the dog. I'll be right back. <laughs> Boy, uh, <laughs> you know anything about these uh, recently because i don't you know <laughs> i i don't know a lot about these the um i've i've driven 2002s i am just not sold on them i don't you know they're not my favorite i don't like that gearbox these seats i find them a little bit hard um but i know that they have an incredible following the the tourings are so cool so rare 
Um, the TII, of course, makes this one special. It looks like a beautiful car. If it's if it's been driving around Asheville, North Carolina, you know it had some good use because they have such incredible roads there. Mm. Um, but I know that this is a bulletproof engine, that's uh, my understanding, and looks like a, a well-sorted car. Somebody in the comments calls out this little blister that's maybe may, may forming in the trunk. And I don't think this is the kind of car where you got to worry about that. I think this is the kind of car you get because you love it and you want to be in it. You yeah, know? man. So, I mean, no you got to love a, a classic car. Like, how often do you see something this classic that also has a hatchback? I mean, that is crazy. I just love the the utility of this car. This is the kind of like, if you were a person that was like, all right, I, I want to have one classic and I, I, I just one car and I want it to be a classic car and you're not really a big sports car driver. This seems like something that would be a really cool way to get to go down to the coffee shop, get to work, throw your dog in the back, do all the things that you want to do. One car that does it all except maybe race. Um, this just looks like a classy way to get around. And, and But I, I want wonder how much the value is. Uh, I, I got to think that it's going to be pretty high given its rarity. And I think that would be the one deciding factor to keep it from being that, that one classic car to do it all. What a, what a cool car, JP. Did you guys catch that? It's got some aftermarket wheels and an aftermarket steering wheel. And they put some uh, fog lights and driving lights on the car. Uh, it has been repainted one time. Uh, but just the fact that it's on American soil, you just never see these things. And as we, we are learning, some of these early BMWs are achieving cult status. And, and this is just a total unicorn. Um, and, and JP, think about this as a take. In 1973, when this car comes out as a two-door, <clears throat> four-seat, glass hatchback, utility, in-town driving car. Like this is a car that could find a parking space in London, in Paris, in Berlin, or wherever the, these things were being sold. Um, this car sort of predates the original GTI by like half a decade. I mean, do you not suggest that there's some inspiration that may have been drawn from this unusual car that BMW made back in period? I mean, this is a really cool car that could have uh, possibly inspired future cars that we've come to grow and love namely the hot hatch genre in general i mean this is a really neat very early take on that concept right what do you think reese am i out of line to suggest that or is it black no i think that that's uh i think that's very realistic i think that this car wasn't wasn't sold thinking oh in 2021 everybody's gonna want this because it's so hot you know yeah. i think this was uh this was maybe sold to the to the person that's looking for something that's a little bit more usable than the 1600 or the 2000 you know yeah. um so i think that's very realistic to say yeah pretty niche I've never liked the the notch back of the regular you know two thousand series. So having this the slope back really to me makes this just a way more appealing car. Uh, and you know it's interesting. I never really put two and two together that the three eighteen what would that be Ti uh, was basically this car, <laughs> a, right. a more modern version of it. Um, right. You know with the, with the hatchback and that car kind of failed in America. Uh, oh. And it's which is weird given that it's a hatchback with a rear wheel drive. All the other cars are front wheel yeah. drive. And I think uh, a rear wheel drive hatchback is where it's at. Look at that rear end JP on that video. You were saying that car is very Eastern block. Like this yeah. is like, if you look at the rear end of this car and take the BMW badge off it, you would just assume it's rough. You know, what I mean? like, <laughs> right. put it in H. Yeah, totally. Exactly. <laughs> so JP, again, another one of these like $25,000 hits last night. Let me read my notes to you, JP. Um, last night's car was at 25,200 on 17 bids. Uh, and right now it's sitting at $26,000 on 18 bids. So it's, it's not a lot of action this morning, uh, but by all accounts, I think this car is going to have a late flurry. Now, last night I wrote down $53,000, but the lack of action overnight, uh, is causing 53? me for concern. I said 53 <laughs> last night when I was just, I, I put my, my bids in before bed and then I kind of take another look and I try to hone them in. I'm going to cool my jets a little bit and I'm going to go $45,000, but I just, I still believe in this thing. Uh, you know, listen, if this was some sort of E30, it would, it would easily bring that money. Um, and I just think that the BMW people are kind of fanatical and that this car is destined for a late flurry. So maybe I'm nuts, but I'm going to go 45,000. I'm all in on this car. I think it looks great and you can't find another one because they were never sold here. So what do you say, Reese? How far off am I? Am I am Way far off. Yeah. Should I be on meds? 
Yeah, yeah, and I, I know a guy that can write them for you. Thank you. Ooh, oh, that's oh, awesome. Hey. Yeah. Big nerd hot <laughs> take of the week right there. All yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. We're ordering uh, ketamine, baby. It's like Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think you're way off this. I think this is, and maybe I'm way off. I don't think it's oh. gonna. I don't think it's gonna reach thirty. I think it's okay. twenty nine. That's I'm, why. Sh- I'm sure I'm crazy, but this isn't a car that that I would find myself looking back at. Okay. Yeah, right, I JP, mean, I, this, pay, is, this is one of those cars that, I mean, I like it personally. I think it's neat, but I don't want it. And so it's it's this, when we're trying to determine, make our predictions, it's like you got to weigh what you think personally of the car and what the market will bring. I, I don't know what the market on something this obscure is. Yeah, and so no I'm going to go it. a little, I'm going to go a little higher. I'm going to say 35, um, but I, with the caveat that, that it's just absurd that this car is likely to bring more money than that M6. I mean, the, right? the idea that more people want this for more money uh, than, you know, an iconic BMW like the, that Shark, uh, that's just goofy to me. But there it is. I mean, right. people really are into these 2002s. Well, so. well it, you know, in and, and of itself, juxtaposing these two rules tomorrow when uh, when we when we jump back on, uh, mm-hmm. we'll get to, you know, a sense of how parity dictates the value in the market. Market because absolutely the three of us unanimous and I would say most BMWs in general, mm. uh, BMW fans in general would absolutely a hundred percent of the time rather drive and own the M6. Yeah. Uh, but from a collector standpoint or a valuation standpoint, the rarity of the touring on our shores could could make it a you know technically in this moment a more valuable piece to have in the garage uh and certainly you know something that you could speculate would be worth big money moving forward so that's on, why i'm going where i'm at so on we'll bat see. it's not uncommon for late late rallies to double the price um yeah. so you know as, as odd as we think it is uh you you might be right on this one because the, we'll the, the people the people that are into this stuff might be just sitting around waiting to the end and the rock i just off. i just can't can't get out of my mind how uncomfortable i find the seats in in those cars and, they and are just a, <laughs> the yeah. worst yeah yeah and, and listen we, we have trashed cars for less so yeah bad <laughs> seats is a good reason not to like a car and not to own it so uh all right so let's go uh we're it's probably got a better all, dashboard than the m6 it probably does we're on bring a trailer still but we're gonna look at something else a 2001 mercedes-benz hmm. sl 500 uh, JP, let me read you this color real quick because I thought this was pretty cool. Uh, fire mist red paint. Does that not look a little bit like my Rubino Metallic uh, Carrera? Uh, I am I am fond of this shade. I love the silver wheels, the AMG uh, styling package that came on all these later SLs. Uh, our car is offered out of Mendham, New Jersey, with just 18,000 miles. Um, it is powered by the five liter normally aspirated V8 with a terrible five speed automatic transmission. But these cars were really beautiful because of the AMG styling package. And I think that's what makes this car. Uh, again, last night, this car was at uh, $25,000 on six bids. Um, and now our car is up to $30,000 on blah, 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 seven bids. So somebody really jumped it up. That sounds to me, JP, like it might be somebody might be going for a knockout punch. Uh, but a pretty car, um, you know, you and I have been kind of circling this model for a little while. We looked at one together in Vegas. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting to see. We saw that that later version uh, bring $40,000 with the AMG uh, supercharged motor uh, just a couple of days ago. Uh, do we think that these cars are destined to start to creep up in value? It certainly seems like they've played to- plateaued. This one's already at $30,000. That's a good number just as it sits. Uh, Reese, what do you think? Have you ever driven one of these old man Palm Springs golf course club thing cars? Never, never, an, never an SL 500. I have a W210 that I love. And, and I got to tell you, I really like this gearbox that slow feels like you're, yeah. you know, Torque baby, yeah, baby German war machine, you know, just going through, <laughs> going through traffic. I, I have had this. I've I've had these cars on my list of don't tell anybody I like these for yeah. for a while. The yeah. color's amazing. That styling package is amazing. It is. I think this car is a home run. Yeah. Eighteen thousand original miles. Somebody get a spur. That's my take. But here I got a little secret to share with you. Cars actually handle really really well now, again it's not a 911 on a back road 
uh, but the steering is direct and the car remains flat through the turns and the motor is a monster. Uh, it, and it, it's got enough torque that it doesn't feel as heavy as it is. Uh, I really love them. And JP kind of likes them too, but he doesn't like to talk about it. It's like, you know, it, it's like listening to new kids on the block or something, right? JP? Yeah. <laughs> uh, wrong. I am always out there saying how much I love these things. I, what, have we met? Do I met? My name is JP. Uh, do, no, I love SL 500. I love this generation. I kind of hate this one though, um, because I just, what is it with Germans? Just call it burgundy, Wait. man. Why do you need 17 syllables Fire to mist. say, you know, cherry red? I mean, it's just so goofy. Uh, this color <laughs> is just, uh, I, I, I've said it before, uh, you know, deep has uh, a burgundy wide body, nine eleven Carrera that looks magnificent. And that shade of burgundy is just fantastic. But this, do they call that Ruben rot? Is that what you're <laughs> yeah, Rubino rot? Yeah. 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 Uh, this, this car is just way too, you know, and it's, the pictures aren't really doing it justice. I mean, in real this, life this. there, it's kind of a pink color. It's, it's definitely got a, <laughs> got a, sh a, a shade of pink to it. Um, the, is it a Mary Kay gift? The, yeah. I mean, and with the big, if it had a black interior, maybe that would, would bring it, it together, but really the beige cool. interior just says grandma to me. Um, right. but they do drive wonderfully. Uh, kind of like what you said, uh, Reese, where you were talking about the, the nine, nine seven being a top down cruiser car um yeah who cares what the transmission in this thing is you want right. it to just be a buttery smooth take your time shifting uh mm -hmm. effortless power when you need it when you're cruising down route 66 and you got a straightaway till texas uh and ah. you just you know give it give it a about a quarter inch throttle and now all of a sudden you're going 150 and mm -hmm. you're you with with one with two <laughs> fingers on the wheel and your pinky up drinking your seltzer uh that's what these cars are for and you know what they're absurdly safe i remember seeing a yeah, video back in the day of uh someone flipping one at about 120 miles an hour on the um uh, on the uh the the german you know what's the the road where there's no speed limit. Autobahn. Autobahn. Thank you. Gosh, what am I new? Uh, so he flipped that thing and that bar, that rear bar snaps up and I mean, he just rolled it and rolled it and rolled it and the guy got out and he was fine. It's like, holy cow, yeah. how is that possible? Yeah. One yeah. of the safest well, cars on the planet. Right. It's a pit stop. Right at the bar back on the tires and drove it. Huh? Wow. <laughs> exactly. I, 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 think, I think these are great cars. You know, yeah. this, yeah. Agreed. this would be such a fun car. You know, the steering input, at least on my W210 is fantastic i think i think my car is a year later so maybe this is the earlier yeah, this earlier is a, version this is an 01 but uh the amg i think is what makes it really look you know something that would appeal even to us as a younger buyer uh, mm -hmm. jp i agree a black interior an all black interior would absolutely make this car and probably bring up the value on a platform like bring a trailer uh the low miles will certainly get the attention and that big bid last night a five thousand mm -hmm. dollar bid to get it up to 30 could be the knockout blow I said thirty three thousand um, dollars. I don't know. I mean, what am I going to do? Like it's at thirty right now. I'm just going to leave it there. Reese, what do you think? Is that is it going to get another bid? Is it going to go over mine? Where are you at, buddy? Boy, I'm saying uh, thirty four. Woo! <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like oh, this one. We left JP way too much real estate underneath me. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm shocked uh, that this is going. I mean, it's like the, one of the things that I liked about this car up until yesterday was that you could still get them really inexpensively. This was a car that you could, it was just a, I mean, you could get these for $10,000 all day long, all the time. Uh, and now that, uh, I mean, with numbers like this, that those days are over. So, uh, but, but I'm with you deep. I think that was a knockout punch at a New Jersey um, yeah. getting close to spring, but there's still snow on the ground. So um, I think he might be a little early. If this were April or May, this thing would be rocketing through the roof. Uh, I say it gets w maybe another thousand bucks. I think it's okay, 31. 31. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think, I, I think you got this one, JP. Um, listen, the 18,000 miles will get the attention. The um, unusual color, no matter how much you or somebody else yeah. doesn't like it, the rarity of that color with the low miles kind of makes this a collectible example that you could drive occasionally, but if you keep it in nice condition, it's probably going to appreciate if we're right and this generation of the SL is starting to have its moment, which could very well be the case. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. And, uh, and, and, and I don't know. Sky's the limit. It's a great car by all accounts. I think, and we didn't say it's got a it's got the factory hardtop, which oh yeah, up, right. up in yeah. Seattle is 
That's yeah. that's pretty important to us. That's that the bee's knees up there. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get to the last car of the day and what last car. A last car it oh, is. Man. Holy this... Friolis. Reese, we picked JP picked this one for you. This car, if it, <laughs> just by all accounts, this is hyper trash at its finest. We're looking at a 2002 <laughs> Acura NSXT with a six-speed manual, 79,000 miles, offered out of San Jose, California. JP, correct me if I'm wrong here. Actually, Reese, you might know this too. Back in this generation of the car, if you got it automatic, you got a three liter. But if you got the manual, you got a three point two. Is that correct? Do you guys remember that? I don't. I don't know. I that, think no. that's the case. Yeah. I think. I, anyways, this is a six speed. Uh, it's a three point two. It's got a limited slip differential. But the cool thing here on this triple book car is that we got like two B exhaust, Volvo racing wheels. Uh, it's got carbon fiber hood and some other like type r pieces the rear wing is is type r spec uh and so there's just slight mods throughout uh making this a probably really incredible dry driving car um the nsx have these cult following they've totally gone up in value since they stopped selling them um and there's a huge aftermarket contingency of pieces to enhance the driving experience on these cars I should note that there is an accident reported. It does say minor to moderate damage, but the blemish on the Carfax will certainly hurt this vehicle's final sale price. Uh, but these have been really on the climb recently. Remember, JP, we looked at that white one that went for like 120,000 miles. Now, that was the earlier generation of the car, uh, but it certainly has demonstrated that nice NSXs are six-figure cars. So this modded one with a chip uh, on the... Um, you know, sort of uh, speak on the uh, Carfax is going to be held back, but they've still come up. These are no longer $30,000 cars, JP. Our car is sitting at $51,000 with three hours to go on just eight bids. Again, out of the Bay Area, San Jose, California. Uh, Reese, how many times have you uh, trashed on one of these? Are they are they awesome? Yeah, very, uh, a very memorable experience of driving in the Soto District of Seattle with a friend of mine who's the head Porsche driving instructor, and he just wails. And his has a, a supercharger on it, right. um, has oh, a lot of those aftermarket modifications that you're talking about. Yeah. And, you know, these are these are uh, supercars, you know, kind of hypercars, I think. And, and they handle well, and they rev happy, and they are amazing. I... This is another car that I, I love. You know, I would I would totally add this to cl the collection if it if it said Porsche. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just take a little yeah. bit different stance. Back in you know the early '90s, late '80s, when this car came out and really humiliated the Ferrari 348, this was a supercar. One of the first cars with a full aluminum frame and aluminum construction, lightweight. It was as drivable as a, as a Honda Civic, but it had performance that could humiliate Ferrari and in, even in some ways the Porsches of its day. But by the time this car was on the road. Uh, it did not evolve enough from my taste. The supercars from 2002 uh, would trash this car. And then, and and at the end of this car's lifespan, it was more like the Dino Ferrari, like the, the little cousin of the supercar family, uh, and not really a car that was a world beater. Uh, they're still great drivers, uh, but they just... It, it just didn't evolve. It didn't grow in power and performance. And and so they kind of just sort of te like teetered off there at the end. JP, is that a fair take or what? Yeah, I mean, you know, anytime you have the same, you don't make any change to a car for, you know, a decade or more. Uh, and in this case, well over a decade when you have, I mean, the only thing they changed some headlights, you know, they made it a target yeah. top and pretty much said, hey, just keep buying them. You don't like it, buy something else. Honda just didn't give an F uh, about it. Right. It seemed like they are just like, well, take it or leave it. And a lot of people took it. Um, when the car was introduced, uh, a lot of the, you know, the, the, the respected journalists in the field were just like, oh, a lot of Hollywood hussies are going to have these cars, you know, lucky hussies, ha, ha, ha. But how many Porsche sales were lost because of how good this car was for that 10 years? Did it lose its luster at the end of its run? Sure, but it, it made up for it by selling uh, and outselling, or not outselling, but, you know, ruining the sales of Porsches uh, yeah. for many years. I don't know how many of my friends I remember that, you know, there's a term called asshole, you know, when 
someone asks you your opinion <laughs> and then does the opposite. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know how many people would come to me back in the air and get, hey, uh, you know, I'm going to get a Porsche. Which one did I get? And I'd tell them all the things. That we'd have these big, long conversations about Porsches. And then they'd show up in one of these or work in <laughs> you know, an Integra or something like that. Um, but, uh, you know, you get behind the wheel of one of these and you realize just how good they are. And even though they are underpowered by their contemporaries, uh, they're still, I mean, I, I would rather have one. What, what other car? So this is a 2002. Um, yeah. Other than Porsche, I mean, what Ferrari? That would be a 360? Uh, 350. In, well, yeah, by 360 by that time. But by this what's time. interesting. Yeah. When this car first came out, JP, it crushed mm-hmm. the 348. And Ferrari sure. went to the drawing board and came back with the 355, which was mm-hmm. a far superior car so it really it really forced the other man superior to, to what <laughs> superior to the uh, 348 or the, or the nsa well 348 <laughs> and it, i think at least it, it was a car that could beat at least at a contest of speed a measurable yeah. speed contest it could beat the nsx the old nsx this car is probably better than a 355 or at yeah. least the equal of it but the 360 had to turn it up again but it really all the other manufacturers had to make better driving cars. Mm. Uh, and so you, you just, and, and this car on its own is on its own merit is still an exciting car to drive, but I, I'm not, I wouldn't go supercar with it. Nice I think, car. I think that this car is like coming back into its own with, yeah. with yeah. drivers where people are saying, Hey, you know, I don't want all the, all the, I don't want the car to do the driving for me. And that's where this car comes mm. back in. Absolutely. And I think that's why they're going up in popularity, up in price, is That's that a- there's not a lot of things in this price point that you can that you can compare them to that are going to give you this level of, of driving experience and require this high level of driver input. That is this car. If you go out and you work on this car, this will make you a better driver. If you yeah. if you get really good behind the wheel of this, you'll be a better driver. Mid engine, lightweight. Uh, and you, with with no torque to bail you out, you really have to like, you know, roll speed and all this other stuff. This will make you a better driver. It's a very cool car. This compared to a 360, if someone said which one would you rather own, it's like it's not it's it's the NSX. Like there's zero okay. hesitation. 360s, I they're great. They're Ferraris, but I mean this car, you just don't have to worry about it. You're gonna get in this. We could drive to California, rip on all the mountains just like our Porsches, and come home and cross the desert if you're in Vegas, no problem. 360s, like, I'm not doing that in a Ferrari. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to get across the desert. Uh, you know, so I don't know. Uh, there it is. Uh, fantastic the belt car. Service, uh, the belt service in 360 versus maintenance on this car is night and day. I mean, the yeah. 360 will cost you seven to 10 grand every three, four years. Uh, you know, this thing's a Honda. Yeah. yeah. yeah really seven does. to 10. I would say seven to 10 grand required. You know? yeah, yeah absolutely it's yeah. it's you have to do it you got to drop the motor to change the timing belt on the ferrari yeah uh, and i think you uh i think you get to i've read in the manual in these nsx's you don't even have to put oil in them that's what it says <laughs> pretty sure all right yeah. well so there they, it is value they side. run Where on socky yeah. yeah i was gonna say that yeah thank you thank you <laughs> didn't, yeah. didn't know how family friendly oh, you were man. <laughs> yeah yeah, they run on soccer. Uh, yeah, okay, go. what's Absolutely. it gonna? What's it gonna land? Where's this car gonna land? What's uh, JP we got- again? Eighty thousand miles on the clock, offered out of San Jose, California, two thousand two manual NSXT with some mods. Uh, really cool stuff. Uh, I think this car is going to have a nice flurry at the end. Um, I'm gonna go sixty two thousand dollars, and it sells. It does have a blemish on the Carfax, and that's why I didn't say eighty grand. Hmm. Reese, what do you think? Uh, I, I think that's the right ballpark. I had written down 69,000. Ooh, there we go. Boom. Deep, what is it? Where you at, JP? What is 62. It? And how many miles does this thing have on it? 79,000. Yeah, 80,000. Oh, yeah. No, this no. is, uh, I don't think that. I, I you know, it, we talk about this all the time the, the core facts. It really just makes me so angry that anyone would, <laughs> would give a shit. Uh, I'm sorry, I just dropped an S bomb on my own show that, about yeah. a stupid minor accident. If it's a, if it's a, yeah, I got to give her uh, a dollar. Um, if it were, <laughs> if it were, uh, you know, a branded title, that makes sense. But, uh, but who cares? How does that? Who cares? Right. It's right. a car, you know, and it doesn't affect the drivability on this thing. So if that really does affect the value by twenty thousand uh, dollars, man, lucky the rest of us that don't give a crap. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna say it's a seventy thousand dollar car. These things are there. Just, you go. Wait, and I let's mean, you know. There's that 1993 NSX, 35,000 mile, essentially a, a show showroom car, and it's right. at 100, 150,000 yeah. with one day left. You know, yeah. is that people white are, one? Yep. 
Yeah. yeah. And white, I, I'm the, one of the takes I made, uh, Reese, is that the white NSXs were pretty rare and white such a homage to Japanese performance cars that, that mm-hmm. they bring a premium. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, like, let's, and the collector versions of these cars are getting into serious collector money. And now people are going to have to have one. Remember, they sold Miguel Duhamel's, uh, Alex Zanardi version of that car brought like two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and it had an accident on the Carfax. So, uh, anyways, there you go, JP. That's a that's a wrap, man. That's a full show. That is it. That is bid nerds for a Tuesday. What do you guys think of that? Thanks for hanging out. Make sure you subscribe, like, hit the notification button, all those things, and hang out with us every Monday through Friday. Your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars on all the automotive auction enthusiast sites. Uh, Reese, what do you think? Uh, thanks for hanging out, man. Hyper yeah, Magazine. Awesome, for sure. Yeah, yeah. have us back and oh, check, sure. check where, out uh, latest issues. Where do we find all right that now. stuff? Give us, yeah, give us all this plug. Right now. plug, plug, yeah, plug. Yeah, so plug, head on plug. over uh, Hyper Trash Mag on Instagram. I think we have a big cartel site is where we do our magazine sales, but most of our most of our stuff is, is set in there on Instagram. Reach out anytime. We would love to hear from you. Always looking for fun stories. Um, uh, Anything that you think doesn't fit somewhere else, uh, <laughs> that's kind of what we like. It's the island of awesome misfit toys. I am all about it. Make sure you guys check out Hyper Trash Magazine in all the usual places. Uh, thanks once again for hanging out with us, Reese. You're awesome. Great job on the bids. Uh, you probably beat both of us, but that's okay. We'll invite you back <laughs> anyway if you'll have us. Uh, I'd love it. Michael Deeb, anything else you want to say before we wrap it up? Reese, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was very nice to meet you and go Hyper Trash Magazine. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right, guys. guys, uh, Join us tomorrow. We have, uh, do we have Mauricio for, or no, no. Tomorrow we have uh, Lane Skelton from Rad for Sale uh, is going to be here. DWA. uh, And Driving Driving Wall Awesome Awesome as well and the uh, Coastal Range Rally. So he's going to be here to chat with us. And then uh, Thursday is Mauricio from uh, Three Pedal Three PP. And then What's I've got my three PP shirt on under this. Oh, oh look at that. my look at goodness! That. Oh, oh my snap. goodness! Oh, oh my goodness! That is nerd issues. That is yeah, awesome. Yeah, man. Okay, we're gonna have to get you a nerd shirt so you can wear that under your <laughs> hoodie. Uh, and then we've got a really big uh, treat on Friday. Uh, we have Kelly Smith from Haggerty is wow, coming on. Uh, so that's kind oh of a big goodness. deal for us. So, Kelly is uh, a great guy. Kelly? Absolutely. Yeah. One of one of the most hardcore Porsche dudes you've ever met. Awesome. And very, a top notch cool. fella, top notch fella. All Absolutely. right. Uh, again, thanks for joining us. Uh, bid nerd, your daily nerd on the most interesting cars of the day and cars and bids bring a trailer rad for sale and all the other auction sites. We will see you tomorrow. I'm hitting the little out button. No! Bye guys. Thanks, Get those words.